Hello and welcome to this short introduction to managed pressure drilling. This e-learning project is for those who already have a background or knowledge about drilling. All the material used and referred is from the internet. It is believed that 4000 years ago, natural asphalt was used in the construction of the walls and towers of Babylon. Chinese writings dating back to 2000 years ago, mention oil in its crude form. The earliest oil wells drilled were around 347 AD in China, using bamboo, measuring 240 meters or 800 feet. The oil was used to evaporate brine, to produce salt. By the 10th century, there were bamboo pipelines connecting wells to salt springs. Petroleum was known as burning water. Through the years and centuries that followed, petroleum was being discovered in various parts of the world. Also, refining methods evolved and more uses for this liquid were found. The modern history of petroleum began in the 19th century with the refining of paraffin from crude oil. More discoveries of oil, its refining process and applications were made. The more the uses were found, the more the demand for this liquid grew. In search of this liquid we moved from land to various depths of the sea. In 2008, the spacecraft Cassini, discovered that Titan, planet Saturn's largest moon, has hundreds of times more liquid hydrocarbons than all the known oil and natural gas reserves on Earth, now that's going to need a really long pipeline. Extraction of hydrocarbons is an expensive affair. That is why we see to extract the most we can. Most of the drilling that takes place is the conventional method. However this method, at times, does not benefit us due to quite a few issues. The issues are, narrow mud weight drilling window. Having a narrow margin between pore pressure and fracture pressure. Well bore ballooning. Uncertainty with regards formation pressures and fluids. Severe circulation losses. High pressure high temperature wells. Drilling inefficiency such as low rate of penetration. To overcome these difficulties, the oil industry has come up with the concept of managed pressure drilling, MPD. It means exactly as it sounds, drilling under managed pressure. This managed pressure is basically pressurizing the entire well bore into one closed loop while drilling. The advantages of managed pressure drilling are, drill with minimal overbalanced pressure. Reduce mud densities to control the well bore. Reach previously undrillable targets. Eliminate casing strings. Lower mud cost. Reduce non-productive time associated with pressure events. Minimize formation damage while allowing precise control of the well bore. The International Association of Drilling Contractors defines managed pressure drilling as an adaptive drilling process used to precisely control the annular pressure profile throughout the well bore. The objectives are, to ascertain the downhole pressure environment limits, and to manage the annular hydraulic pressure profile accordingly. It is the intention of managed pressure drilling to avoid continuous influx of formation fluids to the surface. Any influx incidental to the operation, will be safely contained using an appropriate process. Managed pressure drilling process employs a collection of tools and techniques, which may mitigate the risks and costs associated with drilling wells that have narrow downhole environmental limits, by proactively managing the annular hydraulic pressure. Managed pressure drilling may include, control of back pressure, fluid density, fluid rheology, annular fluid level, circulating friction, and hole geometry, or combinations. Managed pressure drilling may allow faster corrective action, to deal with observed pressure variations. The ability to dynamically control annular pressures, facilitates drilling of what might otherwise be economically unattainable prospects. Managed pressure drilling started as an essential technique for drilling wells with narrow pore pressure, fracture gradient windows. Now, it is also a performance enhancing solution. Ranging from automated to intelligent, Managed pressure drilling offers help to companies to enhance safety, lower well construction costs, reduce well control risks, and increase production. Philip Frink, the president of Blade Energy Partners rightly says, 
at the end of the day, the argument over the definition of managed pressure drilling is secondary to what this technology can achieve, if, properly applied. It is a powerful weapon in the driller's arsenal to cheat Mother Nature. To understand how managed pressure drilling works, we have to first understand a few concepts of the conventional well drilling. Conventional well circulation. Hydrostatic pressure. Formation pressure. Annular pressure loss. Equivalent circulating density. Let us first quickly go through the conventional well circulation. This is what a basic sketch of the circulation system looks like. The drilling mud is prepared and stored in the mud pits. Gravity and suction pumps suck the mud into the mud pumps and pressurized. The pressurized mud travels through the surface lines to the top drive or top of the string. The pressurized mud is pumped into the bit. The pressurized mud exits the bit and travels up the open hole while lubricating the bit and carrying the cuttings out. The mud now travels up the casing, blowout preventer and riser. The mud upon reaching the surface has zero pressure, and overflows from the well, via the flow line into the shakers, where the cuttings are removed, and into the sand traps. The mud overflows back into the mud pits from the sand traps and the circulation repeats. Now that we have understood how the conventional well circulation works, let us now take a look at the pressure related to this circulation. We shall just brush up on hydrostatic pressure, equivalent circulating density, annular pressure loss, bottom hole pressure, formation pressure and fracture pressure. We shall also see the relation between equivalent circulating density and annular pressure loss with the effects on bottom hole pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is pressure exerted by a column of fluid at rest. At rest, is the main factor. The mud is just sitting like dead weight with no circulation. It increases directly with the density and depth of the fluid and is expressed in pounds per square inch. The formula for hydrostatic pressure is, true vertical depth, times 0.052, which is a constant times mud weight. Equivalent circulating density is the effective density of the circulating fluid in the wellbore, resulting from the sum of the hydrostatic pressure imposed by the static fluid and the circulating friction pressure. We know what hydrostatic pressure is. What is this circulating friction pressure? It is the extra pressure used to circulate the mud from the bottom of the well, to the top. The mud pump fulfills this purpose of circulating the mud. The friction pressure is because the circulation takes place between various Anulu's profiles causing a restriction, or back pressure. To circulate the mud via these annular restrictions, the mud pumps add extra pressure to get this mud circulated. Annular pressure loss is pressure loss caused by the flow of fluid up the annulus, also referred to as annular friction loss. As we have seen in equivalent circulating density, the circulating friction pressure in the annulus is what is known as annular pressure loss. Bottom hole pressure is the sum of all the pressures acting on the wellbore at total depth. We shall now see the relation between annular pressure loss and equivalent circulating density. Annular pressure loss can be expressed as equivalent circulating density. An increase in bottom hole pressure is caused by annular pressure loss in the well while circulating. This friction pressure is referred to as annular pressure loss. When mud is circulated in the well, the pressure that the mud exerts on the formation can be expressed as an equivalent circulating density. Annular pressure loss expressed as equivalent circulating density. The following factors will affect the value of equivalent circulating density, length or measured depth of the well. 
Pump rate in strokes per minute. Mud weight. Mud rheology or flow capacity. Hole diameter. Outer diameter of drill string. Amount of cuttings in the annulus. Formation pressure or pore pressure is the pressure exerted by fluids in the rock pore spaces. Knowledge of formation pressure helps determine the hydrostatic pressure and mud weight required to drill the well. If the formation pressure is greater than the hydrostatic pressure, formation fluids may flow into the well from permeable formations, also called pore pressure, reservoir pressure, or, in a kick situation, shut-in bottom hole pressure. Fracture pressure or fracture gradient is the pressure exerted on a formation that causes the formation to fracture and take fluid. The fracture may be permanent or may lose once pressure is released. The fracture gradient is the fracture pressure expressed in a gradient form, for example PSI per foot. Now let us proceed to understand the difference between conventional drilling methods and managed pressure drilling and how the wellbore pressures can be used and manipulated. Now that we have had an idea of the well circulation and the pressures associated with it, let us now proceed to see how these affect the drilling performance. Every open hole has a certain amount of tolerance, called pore pressure and fracture pressure. Too much bottom hole pressure can fracture the formation and too little bottom hole pressure can cause an influx of formation fluids. Basing on the well geometry and design, a mud weight is decided, which in collaboration of the vertical depth of the well, the hydrostatic pressure is attained. This hydrostatic pressure must be more than the formation or pore pressure, to avoid an influx. To keep this mud in circulation, pumping of this mud is needed. From this frictional transition of the mud up the annulus, the equivalent circulating density is derived. We also have to keep in mind how much additional pressure can be used without fractioning the formation and we derive the maximum equivalent circulating density. From the static mud pressure to the maximum equivalent circulating density is the safe drilling margin which is called the drilling window. If we exceed this window in either extreme we could encounter problems. Adding too much pressure to the well can cause the formation to fracture. Keeping less that required pressure in the well will welcome the influx of formation fluids, or a kick. As we drill deeper, the pressures increase. There could also be a possibility that there is a very narrow margin for drilling. Situations have arisen that when the pumps are off, the well takes an influx, and when the pumps are on, there are losses. Conventional drilling demands the need for multiple casing strings for such situations. When planning a well in specific areas there might be an alternative to multiple casing strings, but the drilling program needs to address this on the planning stage and of course it needs to be technically proficient to do it, and to be competitive it has to be faster, cheaper, or cost efficient. And above all, safer to be considered. Most of the techniques and equipment used in managed pressure drilling, are adapted from underbalanced drilling, and are a mix of new and well-known techniques and equipment. The technical term managed pressure drilling was first introduced in 2003, and the first automated managed pressure drilling systems was introduced in 2006. The greatest advancement, enabling accurate flow control, is the development of sophisticated software and hydraulic flow models which has been incorporated in the system, enabling it to automatically operate with impressive accuracy regarding maintaining volume and pressure control. As already mentioned, the development of new sophisticated software monitoring, analyzing and calculating complex hydraulic flow models integrated with already existing rig-proven equipment have resulted in reliable managed pressure drilling systems and techniques. The main advantages of managed pressure drilling is to drill with minimal overbalanced pressure, reduce mud densities to control the wellbore, minimize formation damage while allowing precise control of the wellbore. Managed pressure drilling reduces the original drilling window to a precision, thus leaving room for pressure adjustments, even to a minuscule. Much similar to a choke adjustment in a kill well situation, managed pressure drilling uses chokes to precisely control the drilling window. Opening the choke decreases surface back pressure, and vice versa. 
Before we proceed to understand the equipment used in managed pressure drilling, let us first understand its circulation of mud. The mud circulation in conventional drilling, as we have seen previously, goes down the drill pipe, out the bit, up the open hole, passing through the casing and blowout preventer and finally exiting at the flow line. Basically, the return mud is subject to atmospheric pressure. In managed pressure drilling, the return mud after passing through the blowout preventer is diverted using a rotating control device. This rotating control device basically stops the mud flow up the annulus to the flow line. The rotating control device is fitted with outlets to divert the return mud which then passes through a series of flow meters and chokes which read the return mud density, flow, pressure, and is able to open or close the choke to create a back pressure in the well. This is a closed loop system. It is able to detect flow discrepancies to half a barrel and even the tiniest pressure changes. We shall go through the managed pressure drilling equipment a bit later on. One can compare these two images to see the difference between conventional drilling and managed pressure drilling. These are the four variations of managed pressure drilling. In this introductory e-learning video we shall only briefly go through some techniques.